gone through. Let's bless his holy name for his righteousness over us and his banner over us that is love. Bless him for the consistency of grace. Bless him for the mightiness of his power, the same that has brought you forth out of every situation. This is the hand of the first half of the year. It seems so consuming, but God has consistently been keeping us. Let's give him all the praise in that our home portion in all these challenges has been victory. Father, tonight, once again, we say thank you. He that could keep from January to June can keep from June to December. We bless your holy name. Faithful one, we thank you ahead of time. To you alone be all glory. This is changing, Jeff. Thank you for changing, Jeff, for every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, have we worshipped. We give you all the glory. We worship you. We worship you. Ago, are you are worthy to be praised. We give, we give, we give you all, we give you all the glory. We worship you, we worship you, our Father, we want to say thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all adorations. We worship you, our God, for indeed you are worthy to be praised. We we'll love you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Wherever you are, I want your two hands lifted. I just want you to begin to blast in tongues as you begin to pray, Father, a unique encounter tonight that launches me even into the hand of this year. <laughs> Lepra di Grosta, a unique encounter over July, a unique encounter over August. Lord, a unique encounter over September, a unique encounter over October, a unique encounter over November and December. Lord, let the hand of miracles be stretched my direction. Ninga Pala Gatro Breli Grosta, and let there be a supernatural lift into the hand of the year. So with the Holy Spirit, a mighty visitation. My God, even that is beyond Yanga Prali Dosta, human description. Let it be my portion tonight. Let it be the portion of my household tonight. Somebody pray, the Kepraali Godista Zembrania, an encounter that lifts me over time. <laughs> an encounter that sets me above the concept of time. Father, Brali Gorokto Zebrali Katangala Hakto Zendradia. An encounter that sets me over the, I mean, the, the, the concept of time. Joseph gathered so much, even in seven years of abundance, and he lifted them above even the wickedness and the agony of the seven years of scarcity. Friends, you can receive so much even tonight. You can get us so much tonight that will lift you over the next six and seven months of this, of this year. Somebody pray an encounter that lifts me over and above the concept of time. An encounter that sets me above time. That sets me up even till the end of the year. So with Holy Spirit, Lord, I receive a unique touch tonight. In grace and power, I receive a touch. In the name of Jesus, in signs and wonders, I receive a touch. In the name of Jesus, the God of signs and wonders tonight, signs and wonders take place in my life. So with Holy Spirit of God, we give you all the praise for signs and wonders. We we'll thank you, Father, because of the mighty manifestation of your spirit and of your power tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, how we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, Daddy, thank you for hotels and thank you for the understanding of your word. 
We open up everything right now in the mysteries, my God, even of the tables of the uh, of the covenant of God, which has been opened before us, my God, even by your mercies. And I declare tonight in the name of Jesus, the word tonight is setting everyone on this on their feet Amen. and is pushing, my God, everyone, my God, over and above the concept of time. Amen. Blessed is your name. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Amen. Glory Amen. be to God in the highest. I want to congratulate everybody once again. Congratulations. Glory be to God in the highest. <laughs> I congratulate you tonight because the Lord spoke to me that the encounters of tonight will set people over the next six to seven months. Amen. The encounters of tonight gives a victory, ladies and gentlemen, over every challenges even of the next six to seven months. Amen. The Lord said the encounters of tonight will take you into 2025 Amen. by the mercy of the Most High God. Amen. It's your night of encounter and it's the night of glory. And I see this thing glorious all over you, even in the name of Jesus. It's the mercy of the Lord tonight and it's the glory of the Most High. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. Come on, tell somebody I'm here tonight uh, to receive even from the Spirit of God and my life uh, will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God in the highest. Uh, tonight we are considering changing gear. And by the mercy of the Most High God, the aspect of changing gear that we will be considering tonight is stepping into the future. What do I call it? Stepping into the future. That means stepping into tomorrow. That is to say there is a reality of some days ahead of you and God is saying you can even step into it right now. I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that his future, if it is obscure to humanity, is not obscure to God. And God in his masses has something to say at this particular time that launches you into the future. The Lord said there's somebody here, you have been suffering leanness. It's like things has been going down. It has been a game of deceleration and retardation. He said you have been suffering leanness. Things have been, you know, uh, becoming lean and lean and lean in your life and in your body and in, in, your, in your situation, in your finance. You know, the Lord said it has been becoming lean. He said I should tell you tonight that from tonight, fatness starts. Amen. <laughs> from tonight, the leanness comes to an end. Amen. I said leaning factors are completely judged out of your life Amen. from tonight. And by the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, even the deserted shall be visited. Amen. I say, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the neglected right now receives attention. Amen. I say, the disfavored right now receives divine favor. Amen. I say, the unengraced receive grace. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. lift up holy and say, I connect in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. So, is somebody catching what God is talking about? We are talking tonight on something very important and something that has to do not only with our today, but also with our tomorrow. Stepping into the future. As I said, the future is never obscure from God because it's the God who knows the hand from the beginning. The Bible says declaring the hand from the beginning, even things which are not yet done. Can you see it? Declaring the end from the beginning, even the things that are not yet done. Saying, my cancer shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? Our God is able to declare the hand from the beginning. So he knows it all till the end of time. And he can show it to the end of time. You remember in the book of Revelations, he showed Revelation uh, unto John in the highland of Patmos of things that shall be. Even this is 2,000 years. Some of those things have not yet come to pass. That, of th that means God can see into thousands of years ahead. Now the one that could see into thousands of years can see the next six months. You agree with me? He can see in details the next seven month and congratulations somebody as you are watching me tonight the details of your life for the next six and seven months shall be signs and wonders Amen. i said oh come on somebody's not catching what i'm talking about i said the details of your life in the next six months is going to be amazing Amen. it's going to be amazing Amen. it's going to be amazing Amen. in actual fact they are amazing Amen. in the name of jesus so are we catching what god is talking about God is saying something that is strategically most important even for everybody to hear and everybody to be able to, you know, uh, cling on to. So God is saying something tonight that I 
have what I call the revelation of the future in my hands. I have tomorrow in my hands. He got tomorrow in his hands. And I must let you know, God is saying there are some certain things that are prepared for tomorrow. And I want you to step into those things. So stepping into the future is stepping into the fullness of the Father's plans and purposes even for tomorrow. Am I might talk to somebody here. Uh, and I'm glad to tell somebody here tonight, by the mercy of the Most High God, everything God intends, you will never miss out on any. By the power of God, it shall be robust. <laughs> I say it shall be fantastic. I say it shall be amazing. It shall be surprising, Amen. very flabbergasting, Amen. and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it will never cease to be a sign, Amen. and it will never cease to be a wonder. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. So what is it that God is saying tonight? Our God is the commander of the future. In John chapter number 16 and verse 18, John chapter 16 and verse 18, the Bible says, you see, against all human limitations, maybe we need to back up a lot of it, even until verse 12. You know, uh, verse 12, Jesus said, many things I wish to tell you, but you cannot take them now. Can you imagine that means things about the future? Jesus looked at them. He, he knew that they did not have what I call the capacity to take it. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, humanity might have a lot of limitations. All we are doing is just the analysis of this day that we can see to project into the future. But God is saying that, you see, there is something the spirit has in mind. To human beings, you see, reality is only limited to, to the material or physical world. But you see, for us in Christ Jesus, who walk by faith, reality, ladies and gentlemen, is not limited to sight. The Bible says, for we do not walk by sight, but by faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. If somebody catch what I'm talking about. So we are navigating, ladies and gentlemen, not by the sensory mechanism not by what our physical senses can catch, not by what the eyes can see, what the ears can hear, not by what the skin can feel, not by what the tongue can taste. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not walking, you know, by what even the nose can smell. Friends, we are walking, ladies and gentlemen, by what is, ladies and gentlemen, beyond human senses. We are walking by the navigation of the Spirit. We are looking into the plans of Him who created heaven and earth and who has declared the hand from the beginning. And we are looking into what He has declared so that we can step into it. Am I talking to somebody here? Because as God has a plan, the devil also has a plan. But I'm glad to tell somebody here, the plan of the devil will not come to pass in your life. The moment you embrace the plan of God, ladies and gentlemen, shame to the devil, all his plans are already averted. Am I talking to somebody here? So tonight we are embracing the plans of God. Come on, open your hands and say, I embrace the plans of God. I say, it's my night of embracing the totality of the plans of God for my life and for my family. In the name of Jesus. Uh, the Lord said very quickly, he said, there's somebody here, I'm seeing a bird that is flying, a bird that is perching even upon your shoulders and upon your home. That is said, tonight I am destroying the impact of this bird in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Everybody that you are, you know, perceiving the, the flying of a bird around you, by the mercy of the Most High God, it just means demonic movement. Tonight is the night that God in the name of Jesus is bringing to an end all demonic activities towards you. Yeah. I say every activity of the enemy, even against your life, in the name of Jesus, I terminate it in Jesus' name. Amen. I speak to dark clouds right now sitting over your home. I command the dark cloud to dissipate in the name Amen. of Jesus. By the power of the Spirit of God, I command the presence of darkness to be dispelled in your home. Amen. By the power of the Spirit of God, I release a liberty even over your family. I release liberty. Somebody lift up holy hands and say, there is liberty right now. Amen. Say, there is liberty right now. Amen. Say, there is liberty right now. Amen. Wow, the Lord said that dark cloud relates to despair. It relates to despondency. It relates ladies and gentlemen to a signs of hopelessness the devil has consistently been giving you even a vision of no tomorrow he has been telling you that it's going to be tougher it's going to be worse it's going to be reversed for you i mean he has just been showing you visions of tragedies i've got a good news for you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth that despair is leaving your eyes right now i said that hopelessness is leaving your mind right now by the power of the holy spirit of god you will receive supernatural capacity to capture the fullness of of the father's plans for the future Amen. in the name of jesus come and say we have liberty because we can see a brighter tomorrow in the name of jesus because he leaves we can fish tomorrow so for the club for jesus glory be to god in the highest can somebody hear what god is talking about tonight so the bible made us to understanding 
in that John 16 verse 12, he said, with human beings, you have human limitations. He said, many things I wish to tell you, but you cannot take it now because you have limitations. You can only, you know, see and know and recognize what you see tomorrow, today. But there is a future that you don't know of. He said, however, verse 13, when he, the spirit of truth, shall come, when he, the spirit of truth, shall come, he shall guide you into every truth. He shall guide you. The Lord said, there is somebody here. He said, within 24 hours, I will pay that bill. Make sure you share that testimony, please. The Lord said, within 24 hours, I will take away that bill from your neck. See the spirit of the living God. Now, the Bible says, and when he does, oh, wow, prali, alaya, krumadi, satai. And immediately I see an angel flying, even immediately to implement this word. Somebody has just gotten an immediate miracle right away by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now when he the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you into every truth. I say when he the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you into every truth. He shall not speak of himself, but that which he receives even from me, the same shall he speak unto you, and he shall show you things to come. So ladies and gentlemen, the future, the Bible says, shall be brought into your present day visage. I say the future shall be brought into your life. The future shall be brought, ladies and gentlemen, into what I call a realization, an awareness, a cognizance, ladies and gentlemen, in your life. God is saying the future shall not be obscured. The future shall not be hidden. The future shall not be invisible. The Lord said you will begin to capture visions of the future and he shall show you. I'm talking to somebody about the power of the Holy Ghost veil you right now have been removed from your eyes I see scales falling by the power of the spirit I see the anointing of the Holy Ghost opening the eyes of men I say you begin to see the visions of the Lord you begin to hear the voice of the Almighty by the power of the spirit of the living God you are stepping into your future I say you are stepping into your future you know certainly what shall be and you act in faith on it to actualize what shall be in the name of Jesus because I'm seeing the Bible says he he shall show you things to come. He's not showing you for not. Ladies and gentlemen, he's showing you so that this can be the reality of your life. Am I talking to somebody here? And Jesus said that which he receives of me, this thing shall he speak unto you. So the Father's heart is what he will speak unto you. He has something to say to you tonight. I see you stepping into your future. I see you stepping into amazement. I see you stepping into God's own plans. I see you stepping into God's own heart. I don't care what is in the heart of the devil. I don't care what is in the plans of wickedness. You will not step into the plans of wickedness. Yeah. I say right now, the wishes of your enemy shall not come to pass in your life. Yeah. The Bible says, who is either considered the poor, the Lord shall deliver him from the wishes of his enemies. I prophesy over somebody here. The desires of the enemy shall not be actualized in your life. Yeah. I say in the month of July, you will never see wickedness. Yeah. In the month of August, you will never taste wickedness. Yeah. I am prophesying over somebody here. September shall never be a month of reversal of order in your life. October November shall never be a month of negativity. I say in the name of Jesus, November shall never be even encounters of atrocities in your life. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus that this year we end well with testimonies. Yeah. December will be acquisitions of testimonies. Yeah. I say not even a scratch, not even a heart on your body yeah. shall be found in December in the name of Jesus. Yeah. All you will have to tell are stories of his goodness. Yeah. All you will have to tell are stories of his kindness. Yeah. All you will have to tell are stories of his elevation. Yeah. All you will have to tell are stories of his promotion. Yeah. All you will have to tell are stories of celebration. Yeah. I say in your life uh, you will not be re reporting the wickedness of the yeah. devil. In your home you will not be reporting even reversals of orders. Yeah. I say in your life by the anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, you will rise up and shout it is well with us. Yeah. You will rise up and sing it is well with us. Yeah. You will dance to the amazement of everybody. Yeah. I don't care the harshness out there. Ladies and gentlemen in your whole life it shall be wonderful amazing better and glorious oh come on if you believe that is yours i think your human should be the loudest in the house glory be to god in the highest is somebody catching what god is talking about so the bible says the holy ghost shall show us things to come and that brings us ladies and gentlemen very very fundamentally into the understanding of the fact that we cannot enter into july into the second half of the year without knowing what that second half holds so come on i'm talking to somebody here and ladies and gentlemen i'm not here to open up the heart of the devil unto you i'm here to open up the heart of him that is good forever do you understand i'm talking about who has good plans towards you the bible says in jeremiah chapter number 29 and verse 11 he said i know the plans which i have towards you 
I know the thoughts which I think towards you. He said the plans of good are not of evil. Even the plans of good, ladies and gentlemen, are not of evil. <laughs> the plans of peace are not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. The word peace there means shalom, which means prosperity as well. Shalom. The Hebrew word for prosperity and peace, ladies and gentlemen, are the same. Do you understand? It means shalom. God said the plans I have for you are plans of prosperity. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. <laughs> God said the plans he has for you are plans of prosperity, not the plans of demotion. Not the plans of retrogression. Ladies and gentlemen, not the plans, ladies and gentlemen, even of any form of retardation. God said the plans I have for you are plans of prosperity. Glory be to God in the highest. Say God has plans of prosperity for me. <laughs> Say I look into those plans in the name of Jesus. Now you agree with me in Ephesians chapter number one. The Bible was talking. The Bible said, of course... The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is given unto us, verses 12 and 13, Ephesians chapter 1. The Bible says the Holy Ghost is given unto us even as a foretaste of things to come, the earnest of things to come. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? As a foretaste of the future. So when you have the Holy Spirit, the future should not be an aberration. You can live in the future now. You can step into the future right away. Oh, come on, am I talking to somebody here? So the concept of stepping into the future is a reality by the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not by the physical analysis, not ladies and gentlemen, by economic prognosis. No, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm not talking of, 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 I'm not talking of, you know, prospicious uh, economic realities. No, I am talking, ladies and gentlemen, of the certainties of the spirit that we can unnest, ladies and gentlemen, and we can implement in our life as a present day reality. The Bible says the future is tasteable. <laughs> the Bible says the future is what? Is tasteable. For the Holy Ghost is given unto us as an earnest, a for taste of the future of things to come now remember the bible talks in hebrews chapter number six of those who ladies and gentlemen once they are back there they cannot be returned back the bible says those who have tasted of the good word of god now the bible hebrews chapter six from verse four the bible says those who ladies and gentlemen have tasted of the powers of the age to come so ladies and gentlemen days to come some people can walk in their power right now i might talk to somebody here rapture was not meant for the days of elijah he tasted of it ladies and gentlemen rapture wasn't meant for the days of of Enoch, ladies and gentlemen, he tasted of it. Men can taste of the realities of the future. Am I talking to somebody here? Rapture is still futuristic. Some people have experienced it already. So, ladies and gentlemen, the future some people are waiting for, some people are living in it right now, all in the power of the Spirit. Oh, come on, am I talking to somebody here? So, I'm talking to somebody tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will live in December this month. Yeah. <laughs> the fullness of the plans for the future. I say you are stepping into it right away. Yeah. Is somebody catching one? I'm talking about. So the most important thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that we need to know what we are stepping into. Because you see, if you don't, if you can don't cut the, the revelation, how can it be yours? Revelation is the father, ladies and gentlemen, of possession. Please understand, revelation is the father of possession. The moment you can catch the revelation, then the encounter and the experience become established in your life. Ooh, glory be to God in the highest. Remember in 2 Kings chapter number 2, uh, two men were going by the name Elisha and Elijah is boss. And then, of course, after they crossed Jordan, verse 11, the Bible says the two of them, as they went, they walked. And Elijah asked him, what shall I do for you before I be taken away from you? And Elisha said, I want double food of your spirit. And Elijah said that you have asked a hard thing. But if you see me when I be taken away from you, he said, then it shall be yours. Can you see? So revelation, if you can catch that revelation, then it shall be yours. Revelation is the father even of a possession. Come on, somebody repeat after me. Revelation, revelation. is the father of possession. So the moment I can see it, ladies and gentlemen, then I can have it. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So, ladies and gentlemen, tonight the Holy Spirit has, my God, something about your future. He has something about July. He has something about August. He has something about the rest of the month of this year to say. And once I can see what the Holy Spirit is saying, then, ladies and gentlemen, it becomes my experience in those months. Glory be to God. I see it. I believe it. I walk in it. Then, ladies and gentlemen, I realize it. Glory be to God in the highest. That is the law of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we saw Jacob gathering his children together. Jacob gathering his children together. In Genesis chapter number 49, Jacob said unto them, O oh, gather ye together, O ye sons of Jacob that I may tell you what shall befall thee in the last days. That means I can tell you what the future holds. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, in the prophetic, the future is tellable. Permit my English. The future is what? 
is terrible in the prophetic. Gather ye together that I may tell you what shall befall thee in the last days. And ladies and gentlemen, and the things he told them became the realities of their lives. Do you understand what I'm talking about? As he prophesied over their lives, as he told them, ladies and gentlemen, each of them encountered. As he said it concerning them, ladies and gentlemen, they all found it to be so. So please understand, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered tonight that the Spirit of God may tell us what will come to pass. I say, what shall come our way in the last days? Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? He said, hearken unto me, holy sons of Jacob, and listen to, to, to Israel, your father. And then he began to talk to them. So everybody, please, I beseech you tonight that you pay attention to the voice of the Spirit as it begins to tell you even what the future holds and it begins to show you how to step into what he holds so that, ladies and gentlemen, the plans of God for the future becomes the realities of your life in the future and in, in, in this present day. Glory be to God in the highest. So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? Ah, la parato zibradia. The Lord has something to say about your future. Come on, tell somebody, God has something to say about my tomorrow. Glory be to God in the highest. Le parados te se praningedista. Wherever you are, I want you to stand up and join me in prayers very quickly. And I want you to begin to pray. Say, Father, every veil that has been on my eyes even before now. Father, even not letting me see tomorrow. Every veil of doubt, every veil of despair, every veil of hopelessness. I say every veil of fear, every veil of anxiety and worries. Everything that will not allow me see, even a laughter, and will not allow me see joy. In the name of Jesus, I command you veil right now even to drop from my eyes. A scale fell from the eyes of Paul. I command every scale to fall from my eyes in the name of Jesus. Somebody begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus, mingala go prali doski palanandele ko prali garaste, mingala gatro di ba prali gerekto zirda brani andala katro bredi geroste zo prali garaya, ler ko tog ze zenantra di akto zaramantra bradi katog ze galagosta, Jehovah, Father, every veil in every eyes, because God has something to say tonight, Lord, I command veils to fall from every eyes by the power of the Holy Ghost, the veils of doubt, the veils of anxiety, the veils of worries, the veils of even hopelessness, I command the veils to fall in the name of Jesus. And I speak in every heart tonight in Jesus' name. There is a supernatural re rejuvenation. I say the power of God visit you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost visit you. I say right now that hopelessness is out of your mind, is out of your heart, is out of your realities, is out of your life. In the name of Jesus, you will not be afraid of what the future holds. I say you can see clearly what the future holds in the name of Jesus. Now, somebody, please point to your ears and begin to prophesy. I say, My ears are open to hear in the name of Jesus the covenants of God. I say my ears are open to hear even the secrets of the Most High. The Bible says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he shall show them his covenant. Lord tonight I hold the secret of God even for what God is doing in the name of Jesus. Amazements are happening. 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 Amazements are happening in the name of Jesus. Thank you Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please take your seat. Uh, I remember when we're entering into the, this year, the Lord told us that in the middle of this year, something will happen that will make Nigerians rejoice. I wanted to let you know that don't, don't limit what God is doing. Some people will say, yeah, we thank God for this salary increase that is coming. It will make Nigerians rejoice. We thank God for that, but don't limit it to that. Am I talking to somebody here? Uh, we are still in the middle of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, things will happen that will make you rejoice. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I say things will happen that will make you rejoice. Uh, if you believe what I'm talking about, let your amen tear the heavens open. Amen. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? Glory be to God in the highest. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, by the masses of the Most High God, we are in a season wherein the Holy Ghost is opening our eyes to see even the great things of God. Now, please, let's go to Numbers chapter 24. We're going to read. Yes, Numbers 24. Uh, please, everybody, turn your Bibles to Numbers chapter number 24. We're going to read. Uh, it's quite a, a little bit of a lengthy passage. And here was when Balak called Balaam to cause the children of Israel. And they have tried it, and then the children of Israel were uncursable. So Balak, you know, uh, br uh, b b brought Balaam to another place, you know, where he could see the children of Israel, the camp of Israel, so that he could pronounce curses on their heads. John Numbers 24 from verse 1. I hope we are all there. I want everybody to please follow me in the spirit as we look at what God is saying. Numbers 24 from verse number 1. Yes. And when Balaam saw that he pleased the Lord to bless mm. Okay, please, are you reading to the mind? 
Yes, sir. Okay, yes. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments, mm -hmm. but he set his face towards the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel abiding in its tents mm -hmm. according to the tribes. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God came upon him. Mm -hmm. And he took upon his parable and said, mm -hmm. Balaam, the son of Beor, mm -hmm. had said, mm -hmm. and the man whose eyes are open. I wanted to see this man operating in the power of the prophetic. He said, Balaam, the son of Beor, had said, he said, a man whose eyes, what? And the man whose eyes are open had said, mm -hmm. he has said, mm -hmm. which heard the words of God. Can you see, you see, you can say when you have heard from God. <laughs> he said, he, he says, which heard the word of God, a man whose eyes are open. Yes. And we saw the vision of the Almighty a man falling into a trance. Of the Almighty. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen. All of that is available in this service. Amen. You will never walk in darkness. Amen. Yes, continue, please. But having his eyes open, mm -hmm. how goodly are thy tents, O Jacob. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And that, that, is concerning you. <laughs> that is the vision of God concerning your life. Amen. <laughs> glory be to God. Amen. How goodly are your tents. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is glorious concerning your life. Hallelujah. This is God's heart concerning you. This man is able to tap into the heart of God. Can you see what he said? He said, man who sees the visions of the Almighty, who hears the voice of God, he's receiving from the heavenly. He's receiving from the heart of the Almighty. And God is saying concerning the tent of Israel, he said, how goodly are your tent. DGCC, how goodly are your tent. Amen. How goodly are your homes. Amen. How goodly how goodly are your businesses? Amen. How goodly are your careers? Amen. How goodly are your professions? Amen. Glory be to God. Yes. How goodly are your tents, O DGCC, mm -hmm. and thy tabernacles, O Michael? Mm -hmm. As the valleys are they spread forth, mm -hmm. as gardens by the riverside, mm -hmm. as the trees or lying aloes, mm -hmm. which the Lord had planted, mm -hmm. and as cedar trees beside the waters. Mm -hmm. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, mm -hmm. and his seed shall be in many waters, mm -hmm. and his king shall be higher than Agog, mm -hmm. and his kingdom shall be exalted. Mm -hmm. God brought him forth out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. He had. I wanted to begin to notice all these things God is saying. His kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him for heart of Egypt. That means from the home of captivity. See all those dimensions that God is speaking. This man is downloading from the heavenlies. Yes? God brought him forth out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. He had, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. See grace. <laughs> it's an engraved species. Carrying special capacity to penetrate through the clouds and come up higher above the clouds. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? You are the one God is talking about. It doesn't matter the toughness. Somebody here is going through it and coming out victorious. Amen. Glory be to God. <laughs> yes, continue, please. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Mm -hmm. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, mm -hmm. and shall break their bones mm -hmm. and pierce them through. With his, with his arrow, mm -hmm. he couched, mm -hmm. he laid down as a lion, mm -hmm. and as a great lion, mm -hmm. who shall steer him up, mm -hmm. blessed is he that blessed thee. Oh, Lato Zabra de Garushta, bless is he that bless you. And you know, is he that you know this, 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 this is the word of the Lord even concerning Israel. The Bible says it's like a lion who is laid and who, who shall arouse him. This is Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the heart of the father. He, you know, God told Abraham, he said, come out of your father's house and I will bless you. I said, I will bless those who bless you and I will cause those who curse you. Now, this is the man hired to curse them. And the man is saying, bless is he that curses you. For this man was not there when God spoke to Abraham, but the man was downloading the heart of the father concerning Israel. Am I talking to somebody here? Ladies and gentlemen, when you see the visions of God, you can download the heart of the Father. I don't care, ladies and gentlemen, the surrounding circumstances or how many wants to hurt you. I don't care what circumstances want to bring you down. The Lord said, I have something to say over those circumstances. That blesses he that blesses you. Amen. If Nigeria blesses you, Nigeria is blessed. I say, blessed is he that blesses you. If your boss will bless you, I say your company is blessed. Amen. For blessed is he that blesses you. Amen. And curse is he that curses you. Amen. I prophesy over somebody here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your life is blessed forever. Amen. 
This is the act of the Father concerning you. Glory be to God. Yes, please continue. Bless is he that blesses you. Yes. Blessed is he that blessed thee. Oh, yes. And cursed is he that cursed thee. Mm -hmm. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam. Mm -hmm. And he smote his hands together. Mm -hmm. And Balak said unto Balaam, mm -hmm. I call thee to curse mine enemies. Mm -hmm. And behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Mm -hmm. Therefore now flee thou to thy place. Mm -hmm. I thought to promote thee unto great honor. Mm -hmm. But lo, the Lord has kept thee back from honor. Mm -hmm. And Balaam said unto Balak, Speak I not also to thy messengers, which thou sentest unto me, saying, mm -hmm. If Balak will give me his house full of silver and gold, mm -hmm. I cannot go beyond the commandments of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, so to do either good or bad of my own mind, mm -hmm. but what the Lord said, that will I speak. Mm -hmm. And now, behold, I can go. You say, so, this is a man speaking from the heart of the Father. Everything that has been said concerning even Israel, they are the things we are dealing with tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the heart of the Father. This is the heart of God concerning you. Glory be to God. Yes, continue. Now behold, yes. And now behold, I go unto my people. Mm -hmm. Come therefore, and I will advertise thee what these people shall do to thy people in the latter days. Now listen, he said, come unto me now, and I will advise you. I will tell you what these people shall do unto your people in the last days. That means in the prophetic, ladies and gentlemen, we can tell what shall be in the last days. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what God is saying tonight. And this man has spoken from the heart of God concerning what shall be in the last days. Friend, tonight we are dealing with these things. And I want your heart to be very much open. And tonight the Holy Spirit will advise you on what shall be in the last days. In the months to come, the Holy Ghost has an advice to give to somebody. I said there is a peace of world, my God, that God has for somebody here. I said there is a counsel, ladies and gentlemen. There is a purpose to be made known to someone now. There is a plan to be unveiled. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a heart, ladies and gentlemen, to be revealed to somebody. It is all about the heart of God. Glory be to God in the highest. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know something tonight, that in the last day, the enemy also has some plans, but we are not concerned tonight because we know, ladies and gentlemen, the way out of all these plans. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody we know the way out of all the plans. <laughs> And uh, we are stepping into the fullness of the Father's plans tonight uh, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, you see, in 2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse number 1, 2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse number 1, but Paul, even you know, uh, was speaking by the Spirit, writing unto Brother Timothy. Here you will see Brother Paul using what I call an express word, even for what he has received by the Spirit. He said, for the Spirit speaketh expressly, can you see it, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the hour and in the season of perils. In terms of, in terms of satanic plans and satanic strategies, I said we are in the hour and in the season of perils. He said, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Now, please open to Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 21. Now, uh, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, in the last days, perilous Previous times shall come, but we are not moved by what the devil has in the in the last days, because God in His mercies has never, for once, all through the scriptures, even kept us even, uh, ignorant of what is in the plan of hell for the last days. Remember in Isaiah chapter number sixty, the Bible says uh, that arise and shine for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people. Now He's not just talking about ordinary darkness; He's talking. About about the kind of darkness that you need to have a knife to cut. The other thing I'm talking about is so thick that you can cut it with a knife. He said that is the level of darkness, hopelessness, mental oppression, and depression that will fall on people. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? He said, but upon you shall the, that shall the Lord arise and his glory shall be seen in your life. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So the devil has a plan. We are not ignorant of it. But Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse 11, we are not ignorant of 
the devices of the enemy, let it and take advantage of us. The Lord said, there is somebody here, you have tried a business and you have always been attacked. He said, I should let you know tonight, I am delivering you from that attack. Amen. Every attack from your mother-in-law and every attack from ladies and gentlemen, witches and wizards around you, by the power of the spirit of the living God. The Lord said, tonight, your profession, your career even is being delivered in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm prophesying over that person tonight, wherever that attack is coming from, in the name of Jesus, I cry cross carpet even things and I move it back to the senders in the mighty name of Jesus. Now the Bible says in the last days perilous times shall come. We are not ignorant of the fact that the devil has a lot even of the weight and gravity of perils to unleash upon the people. But the Bible says there is a way to escape. Glory be to God. In Luke 21 and verse number, uh, verse number 36. Uh, in Luke 21 verse 36. The Bible says watch ye therefore and pray always that you might be accounted worthy to escape all these things. That is to say, it doesn't matter what the enemy has in plan, everything is escapable. Oh my goodness. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 21. Yes. Then said the Lord unto me. Then said the Lord unto me. Though Moses and Samuel stood before me. Yes. Yet my mind could not be towards these people. Jeremiah 15 verse 21. Yes, sir. Oh, verse 21. Okay. Yes. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. And I will redeem thee from the grip of the terrible. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care how terrible the economy is. God said there's redemption. I don't care, ladies and gentlemen, what my God, the devil is doing right now to cause even the affair. In the name of Jesus, there is liberty in the house. Yeah. You are going to rise and begin to pray right now by the power of the Spirit of God. Every period that is meant even for from now till December, by the power of the Spirit, I declare them completely out of my way. In the name of Jesus, I clear them off my path. Every weight of the gravity of the plans of hell, I stand even in the light of his plans tonight to declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that I will not be among even those that will experience the general calamity. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, I will deliver you from the hand of the wicked and I will redeem thee from the grip of the terrible. Somebody here begin to pray, Nipra the Bible says it's going to be thick darkness. The Bible says it's going to be perilous. But God said, I will redeem you from the hand of the terrible. Somebody begin to pray. I said, both me and my family, in the name of Jesus, there is a redemption from the grip of the wicked. By the power of the Spirit of God, we declare redemption tonight. I don't care, my God, whichever area. Ladies and gentlemen, the enemy even has been unleashing wickedness on your family. I want you to, ladies and gentlemen, mention even the perceived area of his wickedness. Whether it has been mental oppression in your family, it has been financial challenges in your family, it has been challenges even in the body, in the health. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been slowness even of your businesses. The Bible says, I will redeem you from the hand of the terrible. The Bible says, I will deliver you even from the grip of the wicked. Somebody begin to pray. God said, Lord, you will deliver me from the wickedness of the devil. Father, tonight we claim deliverance. The Bible says he has delivered us from the powers of darkness. Somebody claim what God has done tonight. I say claim what God has done over your family. I declare right now a dissipation of the cloud of darkness of the family in the name of Jesus that I belong to. I declare of divine glory Christian church by the power of the spirit of God. I declare right now redemption of my soul. I declare liberation of my spirit. I declare right now in the name of Jesus freedom in my body by the power of the spirit of God. zebra. <laughs> Menga lagado zebro legebaya lenga ragade zebro lagaboda babra babrade I will redeem you from the hand of the wicked I will deliver you from the grip my God even of the terrible somebody begin to pray whatever terrible plan the devil has the Bible says I will redeem you I claim redemption by the power of God in whom we have redemption I say I have redemption in him let the redeemed of the Lord say so I will be redeemed from the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus I am redeemed from the powers of darkness and all the perilous plans of hell. <coughs> 
My family is redeemed from the perilous plans of hell. I say my children are redeemed from the perilous plans of hell. My finances is delivered from the perilous plans of hell. We are delivered. We are redeemed. We are delivered from the perilous plans of hell. I say we declare tonight there is redemption. I say in this auditorium there is redemption. I say in your home there is redemption. I prophesy. I don't care if dollar becomes 2,000 naira. I don't care if dollar becomes even 3,000 naira. I say you are redeemed from poverty. I say you are redeemed from lack. In the name of Jesus, stagnation and starvation will never be your portion. Onga will never be your portion. The Bible says you are redeemed from the wickedness of the devil. I decree today your home is redeemed. Ah, you are there. The devil says you will not marry. I say you are redeemed from that cause. In the name of Jesus, you are close to 60. You are above 60. And you are asking God, when is my time of visitation? I prophesy you are redeemed from that cause of stagnation. From the cause of infertility. I'm seeing redemption on somebody's home right now. You are redeemed from it. In the name of Jesus. I said you are redeemed from all perilous times. I said in the last days, perilous times shall come. The devil has the plan for the last days. But God said I will redeem you from the grief of the terrible. I said today you are redeemed by the power of Jesus. I said you are redeemed from the grip of the terrible. You are redeemed in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I say you are free. I say I am free. My home is free. From sicknesses and diseases we are free. In the name of Jesus. I say from retrogression and stagnation we are free. I say from unhappiness. I say we are liberated and free. Lord God, Jesus, we are free. Lord God, Jesus, we are free. Lord God, Jesus, we are free. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I say right now, every home is free. I say we are away. You are watching me from all over the world. I declare tonight that you are free in the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I say you are free indeed. For you whom the Son shall set free. The Bible says the same is free indeed. By the blood of the Lamb you are free. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost you are free. Your testimony is in joy. Your testimony is in celebration. Your testimony is in elevation. Your testimony is in redemption. Your testimony is in rejoicing. In the name of Jesus. You are free right now. In the name of Jesus. And liberty is yours. The Bible says for freedom Christ has set us free. I say right now we experience the liberty. Somebody step into your freedom. I say somebody step into your freedom. Somebody step into your freedom. I say somebody step into your freedom. From all entanglement of poverty and lack. From all entanglement of sickness and disease from all unhappiness i say step into your freedom i say from every sadness i say step into your freedom from every malady i say step into your freedom by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus the anointing of the holy ghost delivers you i say right now there is liberty in your homes i say there is joy in your life hallelujah we are delivered and free glory be to god thank you jesus in Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. Amen. And this liberty is not only for you, but for your household forever. Amen. I speak over your sisters. I speak over your brothers. I speak over your uncles. I speak over your aunties. I speak over your parents. I speak over your younger ones and your elderly ones. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, supernatural liberation enters into your household forever. Amen. I say joy is in your household. I say freedom is in your household. You are delivered completely even from the hand of the wicked and you are redeemed from the grip of the terrible. I say this is your portion all the days of your life. Thank you Jesus for freedom. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter the perils of these last days. Our home portion is rejoicing. He said, Arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said, Though darkness covers the earth and thick darkness the people, you will never join them, even as a partaker. The Bible says, For the glory of the Lord even shall rise upon you, for this is your own portion. For the Lord shall rise upon you, and the glory of the Lord shall be seen in your life. So when others are saying there is a casting down in your life, you are going to shout, There is a lifting of glory be to God in the highest. The Lord said, I should tell you, this second half of the year there is a second half of exploit uh, and a second half of projects. Everybody write it down. That is to say, those who want to do project, congratulations, there is grace for project. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. What a promise, what a word, what a word, what a word, what a word. Second half of project. Somebody here, you have been buying houses, you will buy more in this second half. 
uh, please don't forget this word because you will come and share a testimony. Somebody you have been doing well, you will do better in the name of Jesus. Amen. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you have never done it before, you are going to step into it right now. Amen. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, the bills that have been my God, staring at you and you don't know the way out, the Lord said, I shall let you know you are going to laugh at the bill. It, because this second half of the year is a, is the, is, 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 is a half of project. It's a season of project. I said, it's the time for project. It's a time for exploit. For those that know their God shall be strong. And they shall do what? Exploits. Exploits. Glory be to God in the highest. So, ladies and gentlemen, these ladies and gentlemen had a beautiful words that Allah has to say concerning even um, the last days. Now, he said, gather yourself together, all you sons of Jacob, and I will tell you what shall befall you in the last days. And then when the man said, come, Balaam said, come, let me advise you what this is we shall do unto your people in the last days. <laughs> and Brother Paul also said in the last days, he said, so, so, so shall. So, ladies and gentlemen, the future, ladies and gentlemen, can be advised into our spirit. And then we begin to walk in the reality of it. What is it that daddy has in mind for the last days? What is it that daddy has in mind, ladies and gentlemen, even for the second half? Because we are talking about stepping into the future, I need to know what I need to step into. Am I right? Ladies and gentlemen, you stepped out of the perils of the enemy. Then, ladies and gentlemen, when you are stepping out, you are stepping into something. And what am I stepping into? Number one, ladies and gentlemen, I'm stepping into wellness. What do I call it? <coughs> wellness. <laughs> wellness. And I mean wellness. Wellness. Wellness of the spirit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand something very strategic here. That God has an ultimate plan of wellness for the saint. God is saying, I have a wish. I have a desire. God is saying, I have a plan. I have a purpose. God is saying, I have a will. I have a cancer. I have something to express. God is saying, I have something to bring to the knowledge of my people. Oh, glory be to God in the highest. <coughs> Can somebody understand what God is talking about? Now, in Todd John, verse number 2, Todd John, verse number 2, the Bible says, I wish you above all things, <laughs> that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. Now, this is God expressing his mind. This is God speaking. For holy men speak as they were moved by the Spirit. And the Spirit is the connection to the heart, even of the Father. For the Bible says, no one knoweth what is in the belly of God, even except his own spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 10 and 11. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So, so this is the art of God that is moving the holy man to write. And God says, I wish you above all things. Ladies and gentlemen, above anything else. Ladies and gentlemen, above anything else. God said, I wish you wellness. That thou mayest prosper. That means in your spiritual life, you should prosper. Your life should not be stagnant. Your life should not be on the same spot. Or your life should not be witnessing retrogression. The Bible says your own portion is to move forward. Am I talking to somebody here? In Genesis chapter number 26, the Bible the Bible says there was famine in the land as it is in Nigeria and all over the globe. The Bible says, and Isaac sowed in the land, and verse 12, and in the same year he reaped a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Now look at how New King James Bible put it. The Bible says, and the man prospered, and continued to prosper until he became very prosperous. Ah, Lagabo Zabra I like that. God said, be sojourn in this land and I will be with you. What is the plan for? God said that I may prosper you. Now, as God had it in mind for Isaac, the Jehovah, Jehovah, the same God, the one who does not change. According to Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, the same one says, I have it in my concerning you. That in this famine, you will prosper, you will continue to prosper, and you will become very prosperous. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the righteous shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. That beareth forth his fruits in his seasons, and his leaves shall not wither, and everything he doeth shall prosper. God God is saying concerning your life, that is someone. God is saying concerning your life, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you shall be planted where aridity cannot reach. You shall be planted where divine supplies, the supplies of the Spirit will be heavy on your life. Now, you see, in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9, the Bible says, verse 19, Philippians 1, 19, said, through your prayers and the supplies of the Spirit of Christ, there is a supply of the Spirit, and the Spirit is that river. For out of the bellies of those that believe shall flow rivers of living waters. The Bible says, this is 
he talks of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is a river. And now when you are planted in him and he is in you, am I talking to somebody here? Then you are that tree planted by the rivers of waters that bear it forth your fruit in the season. So the Bible says, Ye brodi and lepra, Psalm 46, starting from verse number 1. He said, The Lord is our refuge and our very present help in trouble. He said, Though the heart be removed and the mountains, ladies and gentlemen, may be moved and cast into the midst of the sea. Though, my God, the mountains be shaken, even with his swelling thereof, he said, but there is a river, the streams of which make a glad a city of the Lord. The Lord is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? There is a river called the Holy Ghost. Now, the Bible says when you are planted by that river, you continue to enjoy the supplies of the Spirit. That is to say, the physical, ladies and gentlemen, is not what will be your sure banker. I say your certainty will be of the Spirit. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. The Holy Ghost will be your certainty. From July to December, starting from this moment, there is somebody here. You are stepping into the bountiful supplies of the Spirit. I say you are stepping into the bountiful supplies of the Spirit. I say you are stepping into the bountiful supplies of the Spirit. I say when others are declaring scarcity, you will be declaring prosperity. Because God said, I wish you above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. So ladies and gentlemen, wealth and health, ladies and gentlemen, are are guaranteed in this plan. I say wealth and health are guaranteed in this plan. You will not sacrifice your wealth for your health and you will not sacrifice your health for your wealth. God said the two will be established in your life. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> only God can guarantee the two. When the devil gives them money, it takes their health. When the devil gives them health, it takes their money. But when it is God, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich. And it had no dimension of sorrow. Every area will be balanced all around. I am prophesying over somebody here. You are going to rise right now and begin to step into it. He said, Father, from now on, I step into proper balance in my life, in my family. I step into balance, balance of wealth, balance of health, that on every side, remember, it is titled stepping into the future. You are stepping into it. You are claiming it. You are acquiring it unto yourself. Say, I step into the supplies of the Spirit. Somebody begin to declare in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, member Lord will step into the supplies of the spirit. My father, my God, bless is she that believes for there shall be a performance of those things. Lord, we believe tonight there shall be a performance of those things. We step into the supplies of the spirit. Lord, we step into the amazement of the spirit. Lord, we step into the powers of the spirit. Lord, we step into the uniqueness of the spirit. Lord, we step into the provisions of the spirit. We declare, Lord, we step into the rivers of the living waters. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I say we shall be like that tree. We had that tree planted by the rivers of the living waters. The Bible says, and I will bear forth our fruit in our seasons, and our leaves shall not wither. Somebody prophesy over your children. I'm saying, Mama, you are praying over your children. God is answering your prayers. Begin to prophesy. I'm saying you praying over your spouses. The Lord is answering you right now. You are stepping into the supplies of the Spirit. You are declaring right now supplies to reach you. I open every supply channel to my household. In the name of Jesus, Somebody begin to declare, we hope to supply channels to us. I say right now, let the supplies of God reach us. Angels of the living God. I say right now, ye prodia, ministers, even the bread, the gedosta of divine supplies. We release you for tonight. In the name of Jesus, I say from now till December 31st, we guarantee divine supplies. Somebody begin to prophesy divine supplies. From now till December 31st, we say we shall never lack all through this season. In the name of Jesus, we will never lack money. You will never lack even dollars. You will never lack naira. You will never lack pounds. You will never lack even contracts. You will never lack projects. You will never lack breakthroughs. You will never lack testimonies. I say every day there is testimony in my life. The Bible says he daily loads us with testimonies. Somebody prophesy daily supplies. I said prophesy daily supplies. I said from today I prophesy daily release. The release of his goodness is reaching me by the power of God. In the name of Jesus, every Every blockage is removed in the name of Jesus. Somebody begin to remove blockages from the ways of your supplies. By the power of God, I remove blockages from the ways of my supplies. I prophesy surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. Every day I experience it. Every day I experience it. I decrease supplies for this is the good plan of God even concerning us. That ye brother we may prosper and be in out. Lord I step into this plan. It will no longer be a plan. It is now a reality in my 
life. I read it's no longer a plan. The moment you are stepping into it, it's no longer a plan. It becomes a reality. Somebody step into it. I said step into it. I said step into it. I said step into it. By the power of God, in the name of Jesus, we step into it right now. It is now a reality. In the name of Jesus, we enjoy betterment. We enjoy goodness. We enjoy kindness. We enjoy favor. In the name of Jesus, by the power of God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, of we pray. Amen. The Bible says, in Proverbs chapter number 4, and verse 18, the part of the righteous man is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. Ladies and gentlemen, I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you step into betterment. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it will never become dull and dull. It will be brighter and brighter. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 9. Look at it. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 9. The Bible says, for we are persuaded better things of you. Even things that accompany salvation. Now that you are born again, better things must, ladies and gentlemen, accompany your salvation. He said, we are persuaded. We are convinced. Can you see? We have evidence of this. Ladies and gentlemen, that better things accompany your salvation. We are persuaded better things of you. So I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, better than all you had experienced from January till now. Better than all you had experienced in previous years. I say from now till December 31st, betterment registers in your life on daily basis. Yeah. There shall not be a single day that your experiences will never be better. Yeah. I say it will never go worse. Yeah. I say it will never go bad. Yeah. I say it will never become worse. Yeah. I say by the power of the spirit of the living God, things will never turn south even for you in the name yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. By the anointing of God, I say things will never turn south for you. Yeah. By the power of God, I say things will never go downwards in your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, it is upward ever. Yeah. It is onward ever. Yeah. I say it is forward ever. Ever. By the power of God, somebody is forever moving forward. Amen. That is, you just lift up holy hands and begin to blast in tongues. I say, blast in tongues. For this is his plan. We are persuaded better things of you. Better husband, better children, better houses. I say, better experiences. Lebra laga dogs e zedro keba pra liga dogs ta zakata. Labra laga dogs e zenenente lebo zebro liga baya. Mangra laga dogs e zenenente. Membra laga dogs te zenenente. Eli katogza babro liga dogs ta. Thank you Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. There's somebody you are watching me. The Lord said you are listening to me. You have not been experiencing invitations. He said, you have not been invited. It's like you have not been, you have not been patronized. You have not been invited, whether for ministrations, whether for these, whether for that. He said, he said, it has not been coming the way it used to come. You have not been, your, your skills have not been patronized. Your grace, ladies and gentlemen, has not, ladies and gentlemen, been called for. That he said, I should tell you from tonight. He said, I changed the jia for you. Amen. That business is the Lord said from tonight. I changed the jia for you. Amen. He said, Yeko prali if I it will get to a point where you'll be saying, Lord, how do we cope? It is too much. How do we cope? It is too much. How do we cope? It is too much. That is your testimony. Amen. Give him all the praise Amen. and take your seat. <coughs> Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing into the heart of the Father what God has in mind, even for us in the future. And the Bible made us to understand something here. <clears throat> the Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 10 and uh, Isaiah chapter number 3 and verse number 10, Say unto the righteous, it shall be well with you. I would like us to do something. God showed me something. Ladies and gentlemen, God showed me something and all of us are going to do it. The Lord said, let them generally contribute into the pool. He said, I will multiply it by reason of the pool experience and the returns shall be greater. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, this is something prophetic we are about to do. Wherever you are, please pay attention. Something very prophetic. You may have never done this before. I've never done this in my life. But this is what the Lord said we should do. He said, and the returns shall be greater. Now, let me explain the returns. The Lord said we are all going to point to our screen and begin to prophesy over everybody watching and listening. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And by reason of you doing this, the Lord said the returns shall be greater in your own life as well. He said you begin to have boomerang positive experiences. That means it will return 
come back unto you. Now remember, the Bible says, I will bless those who bless you. Am I right? So as you are blessing people, that means the grace of God over everybody will be returning to you as blessings. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So it is bigger than you just blessing yourself. Uh, you don't know how many people you are blessing, maybe hundreds and thousands of them, and then the grace over them and over all their household will be returning to you as blessings as well. That's what God is saying here. You know, uh, Balak, uh, Balaam said unto Balak, uh, he was, was professor over the children of Israel in the passage we just read, he said, Bless is he that blesses you. Can you see? So as you are blessing God's people, God is saying that you will be terrifically blessed. Now listen, and then we are generating a pool, a pool of blessing. When it is a pool experience, the negotiations even are home is bigger. He said one shall chase 1,000 and two shall chase what? 10,000. That is to say, ladies and gentlemen, that when we come together, our results are always better. That is why Jesus sent them out two by two, not one by one, so that they can have better results. And they came back, the Bible said they came back with good reports. Luke chapter 10. You can't go that way, ladies and gentlemen, and be report not be astonishing. If somebody catch what I'm talking about. So, you see, we are propelling a greater force when we are generating a pool. Do you know in the, in the natural and in the physical, people generate pools? They will call for a pool of funds. They will say, okay, let all of us, let's have, you know, uh, an association, let's have a cooperative, and let's all donate, and everybody will contribute. Uh, maybe everybody contributes a million naira each, and maybe 2,000 workers, it becomes 2 billion. When they now approach the investment company, they say, we have 2 billion for you. And uh, what is your interest rate? The investment company says our interest rate is just 15%. And they said, because we are bringing 2 billion, we want to negotiate 25%. Are, are you catching what I'm talking about? Because it's a pool fund and it's huge and it is a big fund coming in at once. The investment company will say, okay, don't worry, we are going to give you um, uh, whatever you want. Now, that means you will be getting higher than ordinary people. If you have gone there one by one, all you would have gotten with your 1 million, all you would have gotten is 15%. But because you are coming as a pool, you can all be getting 25%. If somebody catch what I'm talking about. So it is even a wisdom that is naturally being used. So we are generating a pool of blessing. You are going to point towards the screen that you are watching. You will point towards the device representing everybody connected. And you are going to begin to prophesy of everybody. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 3 and verse number 10, Say unto the righteous. That means prophesy over them. Remember you shall have what you say. There is power in your mouth. Death and life lay in the power of the tongue, not in the power of God. Death and life does not lay in the power of God. Proverbs 18, 21. The Bible says death and life lay in the power of the tongue. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? You will begin to prophesy blessings over everybody. You will begin to prophesy wellness. Say unto the righteous shall be well. As you are prophesying, there will be returns unto you. And the returns will be great. And then the returns of the general pool, ladies and gentlemen, will come back with better dividends over your life. Begin to prophesy over everybody everybody right now. I prophesy ever everybody connected right now even to this network that it is well with you. All of us that are connected, I prophesy it is well with you. We generate a pool of wellness in the spirit. We generate a pool of wellness. We generate a pool of wellness. We generate a pool of wellness. The returns are greater over everybody. The returns are greater over everybody yambra kabarate Mingala Gadosta, over the entire family of God, Mali Prodia, Brali Gadosta, everywhere, all over the world. I prophesy it is well with you. I don't care what the ashness of the economy is saying, it is well with you. I don't care how people are losing their jobs all over the world, I say it is well with you. I don't care how people are experiencing salary cuts. Somebody was telling me two days ago, he said people are experiencing salary cuts everywhere. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, in your own case, it is well. You will not experience salary cut and you will not experience loss of jobs. I prophesy over everybody connected right now even to this network. In the name of Jesus, the pool right now of blessings, of, of blessings, the pool of wellness right now profits you. I say it profits you, it profits you, it profits you. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. I bless you from my heart. I say you are blessed in the name of Jesus. The Lord said, I will bless those who bless you. I bless you today. 
It is well with you. Your blessings are balanced on every side and it shall have no sorrow. I say your blessings are balanced on every side and it shall have no sorrow. It is well with you. It is well with you. You will build your houses this season. I say you will do amazing projects in the season of projects. I prophesy new projects into your hands. I prophesy new projects. I prophesy breakthroughs unlimited. I prophesy increase unlimited. I prophesy expansion unlimited. It is done. It is well with you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Amen. Father, thank you for this pool of wellness. We partake of it all. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So ladies and gentlemen, first of his plans, ladies and gentlemen, is your wellness. He said, I wish you above all things. So this is number one. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody this is number one. That thou mayest prosper and be in health. So wellness is number one plan of God concerning your life. And we have said it into your life, prophesied it into your life. Ladies and gentlemen, it is your reality come even all the remaining six and seven months of this year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And beyond 2024, it is your portion forever. In Jesus' name. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, the plan of God that we are stepping into, ladies and gentlemen, is mercy and grace. What do I call it? Mercy and grace. God has a plan of mercy. Jehovah has a plan of grace. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention to this because something is about to be commended towards you in a way that will be most amazing even tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. The mercy of God is the weakness of God. It's one aspect of God, ladies and gentlemen, every man should every day seek after. The Lord said, I have the plan of mercy over these next few months. He said, I have the plan of mercy over the oncoming months of your life. God said, I will show you mercy. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, what is mercy? Somebody said mercy is exemption from judgment. It is true. Somebody said mercy, ladies and gentlemen, bears out from desired punishment. I say it is true. Somebody said mercy gives beyond what you deserve. I say it is true. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever way you look at mercy, the truth of the matter is that mercy is the exceptional kindness of God commended towards a man that the man never deserves and the man never qualifies for. The man, ladies and gentlemen, even in actual fact, is not what it at all in any way, but God just decides, ladies and gentlemen, to show his exceptional kindness towards that man. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Please understand, many may fall because of these, but mercy will be your own testimony. Now, please understand who's a fair so that the Ark of Covenant may enter into the house of Obediodom. Please understand, and in three months, the blessing of Obediodom became national news. It became headline news that, ladies and gentlemen, even in the palace, it was hard that God has blessed Obediodom not just Obediodom, but his entire household. Ladies and gentlemen, the next three months of your life, in the name of Jesus, your blessings will be headline news. I say your blessings will be headline news. Ah, I see somebody jumping up and receiving it. Lord, receive it in the name of Jesus. Your blessings become headline news. People will be sharing the testimony of what God has done in your family. In the name of Jesus, it is done. Take your seat. Are you catching what I'm talking about? That is what God is saying. God said he will show you mercy. You didn't, you didn't deserve it, but God said he will show you mercy. You didn't work for it, God said it will come your way. You never labored for it, God said it will be delivered unto you. Uh, you never qualified, God said I will qualify the unqualified. Ladies and gentlemen, and I will give what you never even qualify for, I will deliver it into your hands. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? In Romans chapter number 9, starting from verse 11. In Romans chapter number 9, starting from verse 11. Now the Bible talking about mercy. The Bible says, even the children having not yet born. Now talking about Jacob and Esau, when they were still in conception, when they were still at the stage of pregnancy inside their mother. The Bible says the mother went to pray, and they asked the Lord in Genesis 25, what is going on here? She was experiencing some turbulence in her belly. And God said, there are two nations within you. The elder shall serve the younger. Now here, but Paul was reporting, ladies and gentlemen, what God said in Genesis 25. And Brother Paul was making a dichotomy by the spirit of what was revealed. Romans chapter number 9, starting from verse 11, the Bible says the children 
have you not yet born? Have you not done anything good or evil? That the purpose of God according to election may stand. It was said unto the mother, the elder shall serve the younger. Abba, look at it now. The children, they have not done anything good or evil. Why should you subjugate the destiny of the elder under the younger? Why should you, ladies and gentlemen, even propel, ladies and gentlemen, somebody that was meant to be under above the one that was meant to be above? Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? And they have not done anything that you could have said, this is desire punishment. No, but you see, you have already raised one above the other. Ladies and gentlemen, and Brother Paul said, is there unrighteousness with God? How, how can God do that? When these children have not, in fact, God said, if later, he said, Esau, I hated, but Jacob, I love. He said, even from pregnancy, you have already made a choice. He said, God, why? God, why? God, why? Why did you subjugate the destiny of this one under the other when they have not done anything good or evil? Now, see, Brother Paul said, as he has said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will show compassion unto whom I will show compassion. Now, so, ladies and gentlemen, it is therefore not of him that will it, not of him that run it, but of God that do what? That showed mercy. Thank God for preparedness, even on your part towards what will happen in the next half of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, God said it's beyond your preparations. I said, Jehovah said it is not of him that will it. He said it is not of him that run it, but it is of God that showed mercy. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, God is saying, I want to project you even into a reality you had never entered into. Ah, the Lord said that he said, somebody here, your family is always bringing people backward. He said tonight, the link with that family that Itato has been a cause in your life, he said, I am moving in the power of the spirit to break it off right away. Amen. Backwardness from your family as an ancestral cause is already lifted from your life. You will never experience it again in Jesus' name. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord said there's somebody here. He said, Rejoice for the month of July, you will find a new job. Amen. Wow, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise for that. Give him praise for that. Father, we give you all the praise. Thank you, Father, for that newness that we find in that month. We we'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? The almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, the God who was and is and he is to come, Jehovah by name. He said even in his word, Le parados te kiza brali garus. The Lord said I should tell somebody here. He said, start laughing. He said, because the enlargement will come. <laughs> he said, start laughing. The enlargement. <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. Glory be to God in the highest. So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? The Lord said that I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Now, you see, when mercy is at work, it's not what you labored for. They had not done anything good or evil. God has said this is the one that will favor. Are you catching what I'm talking about? And the one that was a betrayer, that was even very deceitful, was the one that got the favor. How can the, the one that was deceitful and the one that was not living straight and living right be the one that will be the head? Why you saw that seem to even have lived straight? Ladies and gentlemen, was subjugated under him. He's there on righteousness with God. The way mercy it has worked, it gives you what you don't deserve. The Lord said, I should tell you, in the month of July, up to the month of December, what you never deserve will come your way. He said, what you never labored for, what you never qualified to receive. The Lord said, mercy, even mercy. I said, mercy, we direct it to your path. In the name of Jesus. The Lord said, you are under the umbrella of mercy. I see mercy right now, springing forth to deliver unto you the dimensions of God's kindness. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Ah, I see the kindness of God commended towards you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And what is grace, ladies and gentlemen? The Bible made us to understand that grace, ladies and gentlemen, simply relates ladies and gentlemen to the consistent operations of the spirit commended towards a man. That means the operations of the Holy Ghost. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Commended consistently towards a man. You are seeing the operation of the spirit consistently in a particular area. You will say this is grace in, in his life. Maybe the person, anytime he prays for somebody, the person is healed. You say this person carries healing grace. Am I right? He said, because that is the consistent operation of the spirit commended towards him. He's consistently commended towards him. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? When it is, ladies and gentlemen, a pattern of oppression. Ladies and gentlemen, that you can tell that this is of the spirit and it is consistent in his life. It is called a grace. 
Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Now, it is not what you work for, ladies and gentlemen, but it is, ladies and gentlemen, the goodness of God also towards mankind. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, there was a man by the name Joseph. This man carried the grace for favor. <laughs> he carried the grace for what? For favor. And the favor on his life always attacked the head even of any institution wherein he finds himself. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? When he was in his father's house, the Bible made us to understand that of all the 12 children, the father, in fact, 13 children the father had, Joseph was his favorite. Why would a father has a favorite when you know you are ready into polygamy? Four wives, ladies and gentlemen, yet the favor on Joseph cannot but make the man, ladies and gentlemen, exceptional. The favor on Joseph, ladies and gentlemen, cannot but bring the man to the point where he must have a favorite. Am I talking to somebody here? Ah, la parado zebra dia. You have been the laborer. The Lord said you will be the favorite. Amen. Amen. you have been the laborer. God said, I say from tonight, you become the favorite. Amen. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers. 080-33-706-938 and 080-2828-1839 or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms, facebook.com forward slash DGCCINTL, Instagram at DGCCINTL, on YouTube, search Divine Glory Christian Church. Our Twitter handle is at DGCCINTL. Stay blessed.